So this is a hex nut. This is a flange nut. This is nutter nut. And this is a riv nut. Now riv nuts, if you're not too familiar with them, are essentially what you'd get if you combined a pop rivet with a nut. Except instead of riveting two pieces of sheet metal together, it adds a section of threaded material to sheet metal. As I'm sure most of you know, sheet metal is generally way too thin to add any meaningful threads to it. This stuff here is about 1mm thick, so if you try to tap it, you might get one, maybe less threads actually tapped into it. I mean, there's definitely a thread in there, but it doesn't exactly inspire confidence. And that's essentially where riv nuts come in, because it allows you to add sections of threads to pretty much any piece of sheet metal. I'll switch over to the macro lens and we'll get a better look at them. Now the body is made of steel, and at the bottom there are threads. In this case, they're M5. The top is sort of flanged out, and the threads actually don't extend all the way to the top. Now the section here that isn't threaded is intended to crumple and sort of fix it in place. Not too different to say a pop rivet. In fact, if we look at a pop rivet, you can probably see how it works. The head pulls back and it deforms the neck, and that's what holds everything in place. And this is essentially what we need to do with the riv nut. Now like a pot rivet, this is going to require the use of a special tool to install them. And the last time I checked, they were roughly 100 bucks, give or take. Now that's definitely not the most expensive purchase I would ever have to make for this workshop. But the thing is, I don't see myself using these all the time. So if I can avoid buying an expensive tool, that would be pretty nice. Now I will say I am aware of a method where you use two spanners and several washers and nuts to set them, but personally I find that quite an awkward method to get right, and at least from what I hear, that's not the best method to install them. Thank you though, making a tool to install this should be quite simple and relatively cheap to make. So the first thing I'll need is an M10 bolt. This one here is grade 8.8, .8, so it's medium carbon steel and it should be plenty strong enough for the job. I also need a nut for it, and this one here is also M10, and I also need a 10mm thrust bearing. This one here is missing the washers, I'm not exactly sure where they went, so I will need to make up a few replacement washers. I've also got a piece of 32mm cold drawn steel. I think this stuff is 1020 grade. Now I am going to attach a handle to it, but if you want to skip that step and just hold everything in place with some spanners or maybe some vice grips, you can simply make this from a piece of hex bar. So the first thing I'll do is make up the body, which I'll first cut up and then clean up in the lathe. I'll then drill a 6mm hole through the part. And then I'll follow it up with a 10mm drill. Or I guess maybe not. And that's already cutting a lot better. Now this one here is not going to be a through hole, I'm going to leave about 5mm undrilled at the bottom. Next I need a counterbore for the thrust bearing and the washers. That essentially is the main body done. Well mostly, we do need to add a handle, so let's add that now. Thank you. 
And that is the main body done. Now the next thing we need to do is machine down the end of the bolt so that it can fit through the body. With the end now turned down, I now need to add some threads to the end, and in this case, it's M5. So that is the bolt assembled. The nut goes on first, followed by the thrust bearing. And all that simply slides into the housing like that. If you really wanted to, you could add a circlip to retain the bearings, but honestly, I don't think it's all that necessary. All I need now is simply a socket to hold the bolt and a spanner for turning the nut. And it's probably pretty easy to see how this works. As we tighten the nut, it will pull the stud upwards and that will collapse the neck of the riv nut and hold everything in place. Nothing else left to do but see if it works. Alright, that's, uh, that's pretty good if you ask me. Certainly a lot nicer than simply tapping a piece of sheet metal and it's going to be a lot stronger and much more durable. Now if you're wondering exactly what I'll be using these for, I do have a few projects in mind in the future, but first and foremost is going to be the pegboard. Not the most exciting topic in the world, but just hear me out. You know, I've spoken about this topic before, so I won't linger on it too long, but long story short, Pegboards, at least in my opinion, are the best worst thing in my workshop. I think it's great because all the storage is modular and you can set it up the way that you want, but unfortunately, as you guys probably know, most off-the-shelf hooks are, I don't know, they're just rubbish. You go to take a tool off the shelf and the hook pretty much comes along with it, or it just simply falls out. So I think the best way to solve it, or at least make an improvement, would be with a couple of rivet nuts and then we can anchor pretty much all the hooks in place. Now the holes here are 6.5mm, so I will need to widen them to 7 And that is nicely set in place. All I need now is a hook. Now I was about to order these M5 hooks which probably wouldn't have arrived for a month. However, I was looking at the hooks which I was about to throw away and what I found was whilst the hook itself is probably made from 7 gauge wire, the tacked on lug at the end is just under 5mm in diameter. I don't know, maybe 5 gauge and that should be good enough to tap an M5 thread on the back. And that screw's pretty solidly in place. You know, that is going to be a million times better than it was before. And thankfully they still make them, so I picked up a pack of six for about three bucks, and I'll cut them and tap them up. At the same time, whilst I'm installing rivet nuts, I might as well add some nicer brackets to the Morse taper shelving 
to simply replace the old cable ties. Don't know about you, but I think that looks a lot nicer. And that is about it. You know, if I wasn't filming all of this, I could have probably done all of that in less than an hour. You know, chuck in about 20 bucks of materials, that includes the thrust bearing, and you'd have a really nice rivnut nut tool. Now, I will say quickly, this tool should be good for M4, M5, and M6 riv nuts. All you need to do is get another bolt, and then turn the threads down for M4, M5, or M6, and all you have to do now is just swap in the bolt, and you'll be good to go. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week.